I believe that the true controllers, the true masters of the world, are quite easy to defeat. But they're not your real problem. Uh, and they understand this. The real problem is the people in the middle who begin fighting amongst themselves, who try to strike out, you see, at the bringers of truth. The, this is where the problem lies. If, if the oh. individuals would stop doing that and grasp the truth, it would be all the more easier, you see, to bring down the very few people who are actually trying or attempting to control the world who are megalomaniacs and psychopaths who believe that they are better than everybody else, you know. The essence of my work is to make it, you know, my 30 years of research, you know, available to people so that in just a very short period of time they can grab the essence of it. Again, I'm not asking people to believe it, but what I've done is try to condense, uh, you know, the, the motive in my mind is always to try and condense a lot of very esoteric and very sort of uh, fringe information that is certainly not available in the mainstream put it into my work, and then make it available for people who simply, as you say, are overworked, who are distracted by all the sorcery of the media, who have been so indoctrinated that they find it very difficult to cross that bridge. It's not that they don't want to. It's not that they don't have the passion. They just find it physically difficult. It's difficult to break conditioning. This is known, mm -hmm. you know, from the army level. It's, it's known, you know, all the way up to MK Ultra. It's known in the cult world you know, how difficult it is to, to break conditioning, and it's difficult to break 18, 20 years of schooling and conditioning and parental you know, uh, conditioning. So, you know, it, it, it has its own time. People come to this information, but before they can really grasp it, before they can really get to the essence of it, you see, there's a lot of catharsis that needs to take place. There's a lot of self-awareness. Uh, there's a lot of in, inner work that needs to be done. I think Absolutely. what happens in, in, my, in my specific case is that I meet a lot of people who try to rebut what I'm doing or maybe take offense at what I'm doing because they fail to understand one simple principle, and that is this is not just about information. You're not just putting in your quarter and getting, you know, some, a printout. This <laughs> discovery is a spiritual discovery. It involves a progress, a vertical progress. It involves the opening of the mind in, in a very, very deep way. It, it involves the opening of the heart, you see. It involves yeah. talking and listening to your inner guides. It involves a lot of spiritual uh, homework, which may then, one of the first repercussions of that, of course, is that your mates down at the pub think you're a nutter or your girlfriend yeah. thinks you're cracked, you know, and all of this kind of palava. And a lot of people, yeah. you know, just like David Icke always said, the sheepdog barks. And everybody jumps back into the little square, you know. Uh, yeah. Don't don't step out there, you know. Stay where stay where it's familiar. Don't threaten yeah. us. Absolutely. And this is this is a huge danger. You see, people need to overcome that. They need the courage and the bravery to continue on the path of enlightenment and of real truth, not just stand static like a fossil and wait for you know some authority figure, be it church or some guru, to come along and hand it to you. This is what people really want. The majority of the world is entirely static in their thinking, in their attitudes. And they will only receive something if it's handed to them on a silver plate by some expert, by some authority. And in yeah. this work that we do, you see, we're not posing as any authority. We're not posing as any type of, you know, expert or guru or whatever. And this That's threatens right. people. Then you have these inevitable backlashes, you know, of people who wish that you were, that you're, you're threatening them. Your, their, your very existence, the very questions that you raise are deeply threatening to them and their status quo. When in fact it's not a threat at all. It's just a simple act of learning. As, a, as an entomologist would study butterflies, as a computer mm -hmm. expert would study a new program, you know, it's simply objective study that is required. But again, unfortunately, because this is a spiritual journey, mm -hmm. it involves the use of light, knowledge light. You see, so you shine light in people's eyes, and, and they're either going to retract or they're going to try and smash that light that, you know, you're shining in their direction. This is, again, you know, one of the problems that we have. Because I believe that the true controllers, the true masters of the world, are quite easy to defeat. But they're not your real problem. Uh, and they understand this. The real problem is the people in the middle who begin fighting amongst themselves, who try to strike out, you see, at the bringers of truth. The, this is where the problem lies. If, if the individuals would stop doing that and grasp the truth, it would be all the more easier, you see, to bring down the very few people who are actually trying or attempting to control the world, who are megalomaniacs and psychopaths who believe that they are better than everybody else, you know. I notice that there's more and more control. Uh, cameras going up everywhere. You can't photograph the police. Uh, people are told they can't photograph uh, subways and so on and so forth. Uh, it's getting pretty Orwellian. Um, can you help us to understand why there's, uh, you know, what what the power structure hierarchy is? Well, it's partly to do with the age of awakening. Uh, as I said, these people are miles ahead of the rest of us, and they know yeah. they have like a like a doctor has, a, you know, can take a pulse. These people have graphs, charts. They have experts. They have uh, basically their own kind of sorcery their own soothsayers, their own uh, uh, sort of uh, social engineers who understand where society is going, that people are, are looking for answers. And so they don't, they don't just uh, sit quiet. They have uh, you know, a thousand and one ways in which to countermand and counteract this kind of uh, age of awakening. They're very worried about it in many ways. They, they have always been worried about it. they deeply in fear of such an awakening, you see. And so they work overtime then to work on people's limbic centers of the brain to keep them in fear, to keep them in anxiety. Of course, one of the easiest ways to do this is to, you know, continually be saber-rattling, to have mm -hmm. weird and mysterious 
fanatical enemies of the gates, so to speak, to, uh, as I said, mess around with, you know, a man's uh, economic status, his hard work, oh, yeah. to, you know, fill his land full of, you know, uh, foreigners and immigrants and all of these kinds of things. These are all by, by design. This is all by design to keep the intelligentsia of the West, uh, people who might start to, you know, look up from uh, their mundane domestic sphere and start asking the great questions of life. They don't want that. They don't want people to ask philosophical questions. They don't want people to ask uh, 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 metaphysical questions, and they don't want them to ask, you know, um, these kinds of meta-political questions about what is royalty? Where did these guys come from? What gives them the right to set themselves up as some sort of overclass? Where did the idea come from? What's all the symbolism about? Why do they, you know, uh, live in this way, and why do they operate in this way? Uh, why do wars take place? You know, as, as you refer to my Atlantis book, I go all the way deeply into even the, even the question of evil. What is evil? Where did it come from? Why, do, why are there wars? Why is there this mega-death? What on earth is going on? Is man just a barbarian, you know, to continue massacring his brothers and live in a sadistic way, or is there something else we need to know about the phenomena of evil that maybe hasn't been told to us, you see, by establishment figures in the church and in the, in the uh, science, you know, world science community? And I believe there are answers. It's when you start asking those questions that then you start to really see the veils of ignorance and lies come down, and mm -hmm. you start to get a real picture on some of the most fascinating aspects, you know, because, of course, history as it's taught in school is very dry, very boring, uh, you know, and it's creates more questions. <laughs> than answers, you know, part. but in the alternative in the alternative world, and mm -hmm. there have been fantastic scholars in America, you know, from the Christian world and also from outside the Christian world who've done amazing work on all of this to try and expose mm -hmm. the hidden roots of the founding fathers or even the entire American experiment, because just like we can accept there was a Soviet experiment that dealt with social engineering, you know, mm -hmm. we got to realize that the American experiment has been ongoing as well, the downsizing mm -hmm. of all the heavy industry, you see, the, um, the erection of these federal orgs, which are completely controlled from Europe, you know, that these people who fill the history books and you see their pictures, you know, they're not servants of America, they're not servants of democracy. They've been using these talismanic words for, you know, almost two, over 200 years now to keep oh, people in a state of complete and utter ignorance. Absolutely. Because remember, the whole communitarian, the whole collectivist idea is to abolish the self. These, these leaders at the top are the most communitarian of all people. They actually don't even possess a self. They're possessed in, in many ways. They, they have an ego, what we would refer to as an ego, which is a narcissistic center of mm -hmm. consciousness, and they are very much involved with the clan. This is why the pyramidal, pyramidal system works for them. This is why the cell system works for them, is because no one person, you see, it's like cells making up this hideous corpus. Each yeah. of these people are in themselves disposable. They operate that way. Um, a look at their psychological profile shows that, yes, they may pose as being great uh, heroic, heroic people, and they may, mm -hmm. they may bandy around terms like individualism and freedom, but as, as, as you've already cracked the code, when it really comes to practical purposes, that's not what they want at all. They're collectivists. They're mm -hmm. fascinated by these uh, sociological and communistic uh, principles in which no man stands out, in which there is no true heroism, there is no true independence, and, uh, but they, are, they don't admit this openly. They try to put yes. before you, you know, uh, certain characters, certain uh, heroic uh, philosopher types, you see, in order to make you think that they still honor that kind of thing. But as a matter of fact, what they're really doing is a war on consciousness, which is about erasing a human being's true sense of self. You know, mm -hmm. they have erased their, their sense of self completely. They're utterly dependent upon the matrix. They're like parasites in a way, and they're utterly dependent upon one another. They're totally dependent on the fear that they can elicit from people, you see, with all of their different mm -hmm. sorcery. It's actually a war against true selfhood in the true sense of the word. I totally agree with you, and, and I understand what you're saying, but I, I'm, I want to find out what is the process that uh, has occurred that has brought those people to that point were they just created that way did they choose or are they part of an uh, another civilization that came here that just simply had no conscience and you know were reptilian minded or uh, you know because it seems like there's a, a lack of conscience and uh, it just it's just a cold uh, you know, anything goes. You know, if you need to kill a president like Kennedy or King or somebody else, you you know, a word in somebody's ear and it's done. Well, you see, the, the, you're right. The, the dynamic is basically that uh, the human sensibilities, uh, like love and like a connection to the earth and all of these things, have been occluded by the lust for power and the lust mm -hmm. for control over human beings. As I said, they're collectivists. And the collectivist is not happy with just one slave. He wants two, right. he wants three, he wants four. He, he, he wants That's to see right. whole nations subjugated. That's and, right, yeah. you know, this is, yeah, power is its own yeah. drug, you see. It's, it's, yeah. its own, um, you can become addicted to power just in the same way that people can become addicted to drugs or alcohol, you see. Yeah. And just like those people have mental problems, mental instability, lack of self-esteem, yeah. and inability to be moral, it has so many factors. that There's a Freudian aspect to it as well which is so interesting to study when you find out how that, what, what that's really about. 
there is this genetic component that I've also explored that possibly this all started with some sort of genetic interference that was so um, uh, sinful, if you want to use the biblical term, but also so damaging, if you just want to use a general term, that the result of that interference caused man to be a schizoid being, and then he was subsequently also traumatized by the catastrophes that took place. But the sum result is that consciousness as we know it was shattered into a million pieces, and yes. the ego was one of those bigger pieces that didn't, wasn't quite as shattered as the rest of consciousness, and uh -huh. all the electricity, like a circuit board, went into that, and that became the new center, uh -huh. shattered and, and broken and fragmented as it was. It at least was enough to sort of keep the lights on, so to speak. It's like, you know, uh -huh. when the main generator blows, there's a sort of a sub-generator that comes on and maybe keep the lights on, but in a very dim way in the, in the skyscraper. Uh -huh. And that is what the ego is when, it's a pretty okay metaf metaphor, you know, mm -hmm. for how the ego rules consciousness. The lights are dimmed, and this little janitor is pottering around on the first floor. You know, he's over-officious. He wants to see your pass. You know, he's a stickler for rules. Uh, and yet, at the same time, we owe him a great deal because he kept the building operating. He kept it clean. He kept it. He tried to clean up the mess. So it's a, it's a sort of a bittersweet consciousness, reality, meaning. It's a bittersweet. That's why it feels like tension. It is tension. Yeah. At one hand, we owe the ego a great deal, you see, for holding and gluing everything back together again. So we had some kind of awareness. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the ego can be very infantile. It can be very dictatorial. And mm -hmm. there are certain human beings, you see, who embody that particular ego level of consciousness. So to answer your question, how did this all come about? Those people who are sort of uh, the ego controls more will be that much more you know, dictatorial, that much more fixated, that much more resistant to true change, that much more resistant to independence. Because independence is um, uh, mistaken for possible potential chaos. Insecurity, because we are born from the fires of chaos. The egos, uh, you know, came. The ego is literally born. I've always described it as the ghost that arose from the grave of the self. And therefore, any kind of uh, libertarianism, any kind of um, uh, independence, uh, is very frightening to the ego. It rings off all the bells because the ego is partly in the right. It would say, look. We have to have order and security because don't you see what happened to us in the past? Don't you know how fragile uh, the whole edifice is here that I've built? You can't be threatening with all these radical ideas. You can't be doing what you want, so get in line. Mm -hmm. Now, you take that psychological syndrome to the external realm of the world, politics, even into the family, my goodness, and you will mm -hmm. see that that psychological syndrome is being played out in the physical world in endless ways, both in relationships, in school, in the way that hierarchies are set up, in the way that the governments are set up, in the way we design our buildings and architecture. It has 101 permutations because, of course, all of life is a fractal. The part is in the whole and the whole is in the part. And yeah. the ego being the one who's in control, we see its little face, its little uh, thumbprint on reality. Yeah. And that is why I always insist on unless there is psychological change, you cannot expect to see sociological or military change. Even if you think you've created it out there, it won't last. There's a default right. button, and, it, and your little good that you try to perform politically or whatever is just going to be erased because you haven't dealt with the, the program itself. You haven't dealt with the core drive that's sending all of this you know, energy out, just like a projection of consciousness. Everything you see is a projection of consciousness. And so the leaders we elect, the religions that we you know, believe in and, and fall on our knees in front of, and the yeah. political and economic systems that we allow to you know, pray over us, they're actually yeah. manifestations of our own consciousness. Yes, a man who yeah. is infirm, a man who is weak, a man who is out of his center, a man who has no opinions but what has been handed to him by the media, this serves the sorcerers. He's weak. He's uh, yeah. blinded. He's reliant on his fellows. You see, this is why they perpetuate this particular kind of control, because it makes the, you know, the slave easier to manipulate and, and control. Yes, yes, absolutely. So how do, how do we begin to uh, become more aware, more conscious? And uh, it, how does the heart play into that, opening our hearts and... Um, how is the heart related to our consciousness? Well, you see, the most elevated and brilliant thing about a human being is his reason. Mm. Um, we're not gonna, and I'm not going to get into spiritual mumbo-jumbo and abstractia, like talking about soul and all of these kinds of things. We need to be very much, right, very much understanding. Right. Cause that, and also, first of all, that's a very private thing as well. It has nothing to do right. with the collective situation we find ourselves in. Man has been given reason, and what has happened is that his, mind, his brain, his thinking, and his heart have not been guided by reason. Right. Uh, but to be more concrete about what you're asking, is that it's a very simple thing. In order to understand what is going on, the salvation is education. It is studying the predator. In the same way that a hunter re needs to realize that if there's a tiger stalking on the long grass that's been eating all his lambs and been even you know, preying and killing uh, the villagers, and mm -hmm. the hunter's job is to understand what kind of a predator we're dealing with here, before mm -hmm. he can kill it, he's got to understand its way. He's got to understand what goes on in its mind. Uh, yeah. He's got to diagnose it. He's got to find out what its habit patterns are. And, yeah. and uh, use those against it. We are again, as I said, only beginning that process. Uh, but but you know, great strides have been made. 
and it's not a single study. As we said, it encompasses many threads. And what we basically do is to gather data, just like any detective has to do about a criminal. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't become the criminal by going right. in and, uh, you know, trying to, uh, in some sort of a gung-ho way, confront right. him. Because, you know, he's, first of all, he's already wary of that. And secondly, you're no better than him. The way to right. take it out, that particular, you know, pestilence, is to understand it. I've always described it in biological terms when I refer to things like psychic immunity, how people need to strengthen their own immune system, uh, using the metaphor from holistic therapy. The idea is that that's knowledge. Knowledge is what strengthens the body politic of the human race. Uh, ignorance is never going to get, any, uh, get us anywhere. It doesn't get us anywhere in, in a small way, and it's certainly not going to get us anywhere when it comes to understanding you know, the bigger picture. So the education must continue. The Internet is vitally important in that. But you see, again, don't people see the downside of that? If your reason isn't functioning, if your discernment isn't functioning, if your judgment isn't functioning, then the heart may go somewhere, but it's going to end up, you know, being uh, damaged again. It's going to be end up, yeah. end up being hurt. So yeah. we we really need to, you know, and this is why the school system exists. You know, as people like uh, Taylor Gatto have shown and so many others have shown, the way that the education system is set up is not to teach kids, you know, how to think, is to teach them what to think, is to make sure, that in fact, that they don't think. So we yeah. have to also combat that, where people need to pick up the slack on their own time you know, go to the resources, go to the Internet and all of these things and books and learn themselves what has been hidden from them and not rely on the authority figures at all, not in religion, not in science, and not anywhere else. You are the scientist. You are your own, you know, self, uh, savior. You go there. If you find some guidelines in the external institutions, so be it. That's fine. No problem with it. I'm not against people's individual belief systems, but what I am against is the institutions, the parasitical, lying, you know, mm -hmm. uh, hypocritical institutions mm -hmm. that have set themselves up in the name of truth. And that's why in this age of awakening, you see, we can start giving, as Jordan Maxwell has often said, go to the understanding of the thing, go, go mm -hmm. underneath it to understand why these institutions have arisen, promising mm -hmm. truth, promising paradises tomorrow, just like the politicians do, you know, in, in politics. I guess everything in the world gets worse. It's because man has yeah, been man. slowly conditioned to relinquish his own responsibility for his own life, yeah. you know, and, and then he's running around trying to fix everybody else. Yeah. Well, we've well when I said that people have relinquished their reason and their, their yeah. mental capacities, they then rely on the emotions, and they rely on the limbic realm, and they rely on the mm. security level, which is a very low, you see, level of consciousness. This is where religion comes in. Religion just hands you the pre-digested, orthodox, fixed, mm. you know, uh, templates of existence. Uh, of course, this was good in the Middle Ages, and unfortunately still people, their minds are still back as it was in the Middle Ages. They still want this. Right. Uh, right. And, and this appeals to not the reason, not to the intellect, but to the fear, to the envy, to the anxiety, or to all the lower emotions of man these religions cater. Uh, yeah. Those people who've relinquished not only their independence, not only their true selfhood, uh, not only their true light, their true soul. Actually, their true soul is dead. These are the self-murdered people who'd want to go towards any of that stuff. And this mm -hmm. is what then, that's why these uh, institutions are murderous. And, they, mm -hmm. and the people spend their life trying to justify the criminality of these religions and trying to bash anyone who comes along to accuse religion. Yeah, My God, how psychopathic can you get? As yeah. I said, there has been a war or act of genocide that hasn't been endorsed by these religious figures down through time, over and over yeah. again. Yeah, it, it's really... It's really, uh, it, it's, it's beyond belief. It's just beyond belief. I get this email yeah. from people all the time, and when I say all the time, I mean hundreds a week, in which they're oh, asking yeah. this. What do I do with my pals? What do I do with my girlfriend thinks I'm a nutter? You know, and I say, listen, you, you shouldn't even be discussing what you're into, because this is spiritual. It's an occult subject. Carry on, do it on your own. And one day, when they turn around and say, hey, what are you doing? I'm interested. You put it in front of them one time, and you note yeah. their reaction, and you do not uh, proselytize, you do not evangelize, you just say, this is my private study, let me share with you a couple of details, and you do that eloquently, and you do it yeah. with the facts. And then when they respond positively, you take the yeah. next step. If they back off, you back off. Yes, absolutely. That, that's the way to save your energy, to continue the study. That's also respecting their boundaries. Absolutely. And if they come back at you with a lot of rebuttal, well, listen, they come back at you with a lot of rebuttal for being into anything. So, you know, right. don't get hot under the collar about it. Just go, thank you, that's your opinion. I'm, I'm glad. I, I note that. And carry on in your garret or your, you know, garage, studying and doing what you need to be doing, and keep it with the utmost sacredness. It is not for the yeah. Johnnies down at the ballpark. It is not for the, the pals and the buddies at the beer, uh, you know, at the uh, at the bar. You know, yeah. you can talk about certain superficialities, but you know, yeah. they want to watch X Factor. They're waiting for Bill O'Reilly to tell them what is what's, what it's all about. All right? Yeah, exactly. What are you going? What are you going to do to wake people yeah. up? Except you know, like you're doing, do it slowly, do it patiently, do it lovingly. Have radio shows, have blogs, have websites, have books. Take all the flack that they can throw at you. You know, the ones who are closed-minded, and just keep on going because we don't serve humanity. We serve truth. And That's each right. new, Absolutely. each new neophyte who steps yeah. into that light yeah. is part of that you know journey. But we're not yeah. into creating cults. We're not into creating no. collectivist, collectivized no. groups or anything like that. No. 
the series that I'm, we're working on now, uh, called The Architects of Control, is a look at technology in the hands of psychopaths. Uh, yeah. What I mean by that is I'm not that against technology. I love it just like, you know, as, as good as the next person does. Uh, but I'm very worried that, you see, these uh, great uh, gifts of the human reason, you know, it yeah. wasn't, te- wasn't Nikola Tesla into technology, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, so, That's you know, the techn- Tesla. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and we have people like Buckminster Fuller and what have you. So, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. the people who built the Parthenon, the people who built the, the pyramid, you know, were, were into technology, but yeah. they weren't yeah. psychopaths. They were spiritual adepts of a very, very high level who knew how to create the models, you know, of rectitude that people could follow. What we're having today, though, is the people who have, you know, been fil- filtered through yeah. the Masonic systems. That's why these systems exist as a way of filtering out good men so that only scum rise to the top, psychopaths, yeah. that is. That's Unfortunately, right. what we have now at the top of the big corporations and the Silicon Valley corporations are right. utter psychopaths right <laughs> who are happy to tell you that they're members of the serpent brotherhood you only have to look at their you know logos and emblems to know that That's and right. uh, these people are in the command of technology that really has nothing to do with them we think on the street level all oh, these great tech technocrats no 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 they're just manipulating something that was created yeah. by the work of great spiritual men you yeah. know they're misusing it mishandling That's right. it. and That's so right. my work now definitely looks into that whole question of where we might be going uh, it's not to bash technology, but it's to say if, the, if this type of technology is perpetually put into the hands of psychopaths and they get the rule, they get to yeah. tell us how to use it, they run these companies, then, of course, we may be in some very serious situation. My yeah. Atlantis book has always delved you know, into the question that you're asking about what is the occult roots of this more uh, sinister manipulation of matter through technology, mm-hmm. you know, and even the, the meaning of the word technology, where it comes from, all of this fascinating stuff I dealt with in the Atlantis book, showing that the same um, alien group, basically, who have have no human component to them, they have relied on technology because technology is nothing more than a means to the power that they you know desire. It's like the big stick that they wield, yeah, and yeah. Uh, we do we are in a situation of being subjugated, you yeah. know, by that. They're building their malls to look like cathedrals. Yep, yep. This is, and it's the same in Moscow as it is in Johannesburg. It's the same in Budapest as it is in New York. It's a one world, and I wouldn't even call it American culture because remember that's not actually true. This has been impo- that kind of culture has been imposed on America in the same way it's been imposed on everywhere else. It's not being born in America. The right. people who put this into America are not Americans. They don't serve the country. This is one globalistic, you know, yeah. New Atlantis type of setup, you know, following on using man's spiritual ardor, his need for truth, his need for you know uh, meaning. So they design the buildings, they design the streets, they design all the yep. technology, they design these TV commercials in a certain way yep. that very much stimulates, you see, your deeper yep. archive, your deeper archetypal matrix. Uh, it, it inspires you partly, but it leaves you empty and vacant yep. and delinquent at the end of it because there's nothing there at the back of it all. And that's what's yep. creating the murder and the crime and the strange uh, you know, criminality that's taking place. It accounts for the, the incredible use of drugs, both, medic, both uh, pharmaceutical and other that's happening in our world today, and it also expa- explains just the simple vacant looks that you see on people's, you know, gormless faces when you're walking in the streets or driving in the car or trying to have a, a conversation with somebody. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. you know, tell me that that is not possible, that you can actually have, when's the last time you had a decent conversation with anybody you just happened to bump into? Oh, I know, I know. It's like the night of the living dead. Well, the, I, And I, even I, if you I, meet somebody who you are having a conversation, they're looking over your shoulder wondering, is Big Brother watching me? Am I going to be in danger for speaking my mind? It is an occasional thing that happens where you meet people who really, they, you know, this awakening is not just, again, about an external process of digesting external information. The awakening right. I'm really thinking of is the one that's coming from within people that leads yeah. them to this information. There's yeah. some trigger, there's some switch within. Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah, and that's happening in all sorts of generations right across the board, and that is wonderful. That is really, really good to see. And it's also happening, you know, basically across the world from Australia, you know, to South America. Wonderful. I keep telling people that there are no shortcuts. You can't yeah. shortcut this information and try to squeeze it into your daily domestic, uh, you know, BS. You're going to have right, to take right. the time, That's treat right. it like yeah. a university degree. You yeah. know, people should go and rent. You know, people should go and rent the movie. You know, educating Rita. Okay. Did you ever get to see that film? I don't think I did. Uh, that yeah, it's, I it's a really funny. It's, it's a comedy. Okay. It's a comedy set in England. You know, it's with Michael Caine. Oh. And it's called okay. Educating Rita. And well, I'll get yeah, it. it's about a working class girl who tries to go and get a university education. Okay. And it's a funny movie, but in that movie, basically, you know, is the answers. Is that you need the passion, you need to sing a different song, you need to rise up above the rest of the people who want to keep, you know, you're not going to find eagles amongst chickens. So if you want to be an eagle and have that kind of perception and ride the sky you know, in yeah. that much freedom and that much majesty, you're going to have to get away from the chickens who, you know, yeah. are plucking at maggots. You've got to, yeah. you know, set up your own boundaries. You're going to have yeah. to raise your head high. You're going to have to be, you know, what, what your 
really on this planet for ask the questions, the big questions. Do not have, I always say, have zero tolerance for the lie. And right. continue to arm yourself with education and study, study, study. You know, make time for this just like you know, Rita did when she wanted to become a literary critic. Study it like anyone does who goes to school. Give it the time it deserves. You've, you've, mm -hmm. Just to jump through simple hoops academically, you have to give a lot of time, many years, to study an academic subject. How can you then think that it's any less demanding with something that's so powerful, so meaningful as these great questions you know, of life, the biggest picture? Mm -hmm. and, and realize that when you're doing it, you are part of a very, very small group of people in history mm -hmm. from for thousands of years now, even mm -hmm. people with great intellects, great authors, writers, and what have you, have never even come across any information like this. So, you know, yes. don't feel small in your mind. I tell this to people who may be coming for the first time to our work. Feel big about this. You are, yes. you know, you're part of a prestigious group of people who have the benefit for the first time in their life to grasp this information. You know, it's absolutely priceless because yes. musicians, yes. dramatists, producers, yes. uh, great financial tycoons only maybe knew a tiny little part of what you're saying, like the young people today can get their hands around, you see, by, by checking out our work. You know, yes. this is a tremendously impassioned and, and should be a very optimistic time, not a, pe a pessimistic time of, oh, my God, you know, the world's against us. We're never going to get anywhere. You know, th think historically. Think back to the illiteracy. Think back yes. to the class divisions. Think back to the lack of information that was given and the fact that yes. you could even be hung, drawn, and quartered for even asking questions oh, not so long ago. Burned to the wits. <laughs> right. So this yeah. is where we need to realize, get the horse by the you know, reins, get the bull by the horns, do not cut corners, have zero tolerance for the lie, realize yeah. you are your own academy of learning in this business so that you can then leave a better future to your children because you have really done something worthwhile in this world, which is find out what reality is all about, what meaning is all about, who's running the world system and what they're made of, and so that you can then continue through your websites, or, you know, your books or DVDs or whatever, to bequeath something to those people. Yeah. Do not think for a moment that something as gigantic as a subject is going to be answered by one man in one age in one year. It's simply Absolutely. irrational to think that way. It's a process. It's part of the process. Yeah. And people need yeah. to you know, be part of that process, but not get thinking it's all going to come to us you know, in a couple of days, in a couple of moments, or from just one teacher. This is preposterous. Right. You're talking yeah. about a gigantic movement of tyranny that's been operating in the world, and you know, it's, it's, all these voices need to be heard. But you need to contribute and then pass it on the baton to, to the next generation until finally we do end up you know, demolishing these false dystopias that they've been handed yeah, to us. You can finally build the true citadels of justice, truth, and, and freedom.